You're watching PBS Books. Welcome back to the Los Angeles Times Festival of Books. I'm Jeffrey Brown. We are still, we're in the middle of a beautiful Saturday, continuing with uh, many wonderful authors. I'm joined now by Nell Scavell. I Hi. said it right. You did. Hello. And My this name book, runs. this book may win the prize for, for title. Just the fun, or, or the longest subtitle anyway. Yeah. Just the funny parts and a few hard truths about sneaking in to the Hollywood Boys Club. Yeah, at the last second, they, they questioned the title, Just the Funny Parts, because they wanted me to emphasize the fact that I was often the only girl in the room. Yeah. So um, I came back at them with another title, which was Penis, 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 Me, Penis. <laughs> and, and suddenly they loved Just the Funny Parts. I think you're allowed to say that on the <laughs> webcast here. Do you want to say it again? No, no, no don't do that. <laughs> suddenly Just the Funny Parts sounded... Perfect. Yeah, they, yeah they, we'll go with that. Although it would get attention on the bookshelves, right? At, uh... Yeah, and the cover, I think, could have been <laughs> kind of exquisite. <laughs> Before I talked about the book, you were just telling me, we're at the book festival, this sort of starts here, or at least the idea of writing this from some years ago? Well, so my book is about my 30 years as a TV writer, yeah. and so my home base is L.A., but I'm from the East Coast. I grew up, we didn't have a TV, we read books. So I've been coming to the LA Times Book Festival mm -hmm. forever. And I, I would say maybe six, seven years ago, I went to a workshop on memoir that was given by Scott Berg, yeah. uh, who's just the greatest Wonderful. biographer. Yeah, of course, yeah. And I do remember one story he told there about an author who was working on a Charlie Chaplin biography, and he was four years into his research when he suddenly realized he couldn't stand the guy right. and just dropped that it. That can happen. I couldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I was stuck. <laughs> so so uh, you were stuck. So what story did you want, in big terms, what story did you want to tell? So there are three things I love, which are comedy, yeah. creativity, and equality. And I wanted to write about all three of them. And if you like two out of three of those, I Buy recommend the book. The book. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I do hope, you know, you could come for The Simpsons and stay for the feminism. Yeah. And, and uh, you should tell people, I mean, you've, you've got it on the, on the cover. Simpsons, Monk, Murphy, Brown, Newhart, uh, Late Night with David Letterman. You've had a lot of experience in the world of television comedy. I always loved writing jokes. Um, there's a story about my mom going to my third grade parent teacher conference yeah. and the teacher telling my mother, Nell makes too many jokes in class. Please tell her to tone it down. So my mom delivers a message to me on my 40th birthday. <laughs> <laughs> and by then I created work? Serena the Teenage Witch and I'd written for Letterman and Newhart and... Um, you know, it was nice that I had a mom who protected me. Mm -hmm. But but it starts, you're talking about a, a childhood with no television yeah. to end up in television like that. I mean, this is a story you're telling here about what, how, you, how, yeah. how you bridge that gap, right? But are you, were you surprised to end up where you ended up, given how you started? I was, and... In the book, I have a lot of original documentation. I saved all my scripts, and the, even the scripts with, that are noted to death. And I think I saved them because I thought TV could go away at any moment. And I wanted proof. You mean your life in TV or TV generally? Uh, my life in TV. Yeah. TV would continue yeah. on without me. Yeah. Uh, but I had proof, so I held on to these things. Did it, always feel, did it really feel that way? Like, this, is, this could go away? Yeah, well, I was so often um, out of place in these rooms because I was drawn to a sensibility that was stereotypically male. So whether it was Monk or NCIS or Letterman or The Simpsons, you know, I, w I was the only girl in the room. Yeah, so that becomes the, the story. How is it that comedy is, the comedy world is male? Is it that television, the industry is male? What, what? Well, 
all industries are male. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. and in some ways, the story applies to every field. And um, I hope there's a lot of advice about how to deal with, to navigate those waters that apply outside Hollywood. Hollywood is a little different in that it is so subjective, mm -hmm. right? What is funny? Who determines what's funny? Right. Um, and can you prove, no, wait, this is funny. So when you were, tr when you were first starting to be funny yeah. in the world of comedy, it was a male funny, uh, d comedy was defined by males. Yes, and in fact, um, I talk about how the first script I ever sold was to It's Gary Shandling's show, mm -hmm. and the first time I meet Gary Shandling, he says to me, you write like a guy. Right. And he meant that as a total compliment. Right, and how'd you take it? Well, at the time, it was the 80s. I, and I think what he meant was I wrote hard jokes. You know, I'd write jokes like um, Gary's in the kitchen and a friend comes in and says, uh, do you need an extra pair of hands? And he says, that would double my sex life. <laughs> and that, but, you know, I mean, women can write the raunchiest jokes. You know what it's like? It's like Jews write the best Christmas songs. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so... And the other interesting thing, and this only occurred to me years later, yeah. you know, Shanling was a brilliant stand-up, but he talked a lot about his failed relationships and his sure. insecurities Famously, about his hair. Yeah. Yeah. He wrote like a girl. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean that as a compliment. Did you ever get to tell him? I didn't, yeah. actually. So, I mean, the book obviously comes out amid this, the Me Too era, right? Yeah. But, I mean, from looking, from going, seeing this book... None of that surprises you, I guess. What's come out in the last year or two? No, no, and it, it's a long time coming, mm -hmm. and um, I am thrilled that people are speaking out. Uh, again, it's bad everywhere. I will say Hollywood, it's so bad, they even created a cutesy nickname for sexual harassment, which is the casting couch. Right. Which does sound better than the rape sofa. Right. So, uh, but it is, I mean, it was but codified. But that has a long history. I mean, everybody knew about the casting That's couch. Right. But what, what do you think happened to bring it so much to the public attention now? I personally feel women felt they had nothing left to lose. Really? And that things are so bad in this country. Politically, I think Hillary Clinton losing, the most qualified presidential candidate in history losing to the least qualified. I personally feel, you know, freedom's just another word for nothing left to lose. Mm -hmm. and, and that allowed some women to speak out. And what about in the world of comedy? How much has that changed? Oh, I don't, I don't know. You know, there's, you can cherry pick your data. Yeah. And so we'll, we'll see. Ask me in 10 years. <laughs> okay. But tell me about, about how you think about comedy. Because you said you were writing from when you were, when you were a tiny girl, right? Has humor changed for you? Or do you have a theory of uh, of humor or, or comedy, or is this just well? I, I flow. love it. I love absurd. I love the big twist that yeah. you don't see coming, but once it arrives, it makes total sense. Uh, and I grew up watching in Boston, like you, yeah. Channel Fifty Six, Channel Thirty Eight. Remember? Yeah. Oh they yes, I do. The Marx Brothers and the Thin Man yeah, yeah. movie. So I watched like a lot of screwball comedies, and then I get to high school. And Wait a minute, you grew up watching those and not uh, like the sitcoms of the day? No, no, I love like black what and white movies. What kind of childhood is it? <laughs> but then in yeah. high school, yeah. you get Monty Python and Saturday Night Live yeah. comes on with Gilda Radner, Jane Curtin, um, and Lorraine Newman, and right. that was really influential, too. In, in what way? What, what, what did they well, bring? You got to see women being funny. Look, I grew up with Joan Rivers, would guest host The Tonight Show. I thought she was much funnier than Johnny Carson. Right. But if you were born after 1970, you didn't have that experience. Right. right. And I had these two hilarious aunts. Um, oh, here's a good story for a book festival. Okay. So one day, my sister Alice is on the couch reading Little Women. And my aunt walks by, taps her on the shoulder. Is this the beginning of a joke? <laughs> no, this is, no, okay, my this aunt, is a real she's story. reading Little Women. <laughs> okay. This 100% happened. Yeah. My aunt taps her on the shoulder and says, don't get too attached to Beth. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> so there was humor in the in the oh, family. Oh, there was a lot of humor, yeah, yeah. and and people got positive attention for yeah. humor too in my family. So w when you started to get into the world, especially of television, what was the w w was there a moment where you said, "Oh, I I, I I'm." I'm there. I mean, what was what was the ambition when you started something like that? So, I've made it. When does one know? So my book is divided into four parts. Yeah. And it has to do with a, a joke, which is what are the four stages of a writer's career? Yeah. And I'll use my name to illustrate. So the stages are, one, who is Nell Scovell? Right. Two, get me Nell Scovell. Three, get me a younger, cheaper Nell Scovell. Right. And four, who is Nell Scovell? <laughs> but the twist in the book... All right, but wait a yeah. minute. Let's parse that, okay? So, okay? so the beginning is, who is this person that... Uh, right. This is you trying to make a name for yourself. Yes. And how long did that take? So I would say in TV, I had... Um, Two years and five jobs. Yeah. You know, I kept going on shows that would fail. The first show I go on uh, was canceled after a month. Because um, that's the life you're talking about, the where best it could go thing, away. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. the guys in the office next to mine, um, we remained friends. And that was Greg Daniels, mm -hmm. who went on to create... Uh, the American Office and Parks and Rec, mm -hmm. and this other guy named Conan O'Brien. Right. Not sure Heard what happened him. to him. Yeah. He was so funny, though. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and so it took a while, but then yeah. um, I tell a story about bump, uh, working on the New Heart, uh, the last season of New Heart, yeah. and on my last day on the job, bumping into Bob New Heart. And we have a four-word conversation where he says, hi, Nell, and I say, hi, Bob. <laughs> which is this classic college <laughs> drinking game. Right. <laughs> and I, I was like, I played the pro version. <laughs> so, so then it's get me, Nell Scavell, right. which means you have made it as I a name. I create Sabrina the Teenage Witch. I'm the showrunner. Yeah. I, I start directing movies. Yeah. Um, I have two kids, you know, and I'm really on top of everything. Yeah. And just about then is when... And then it's, they start and looking for a younger, get me a cheaper. younger, cheaper. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's just the normal arc of. Is that more for a woman? No, I think I, I think that is um, normal for everyone. Yeah. But the twist is at the end when um, you go back to who is Nell Scovell, yeah. and in the joke, you're meant to go into obscurity. For me, it actually became an existential question: mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who was I? What did I stand for? And this is the last stage where I start speaking out about gender discrimination and late night TV. And this puts me on the path to meet Sheryl Sandberg. Yeah. And I start helping her write speeches. And then together we write Lean In. Yeah. Well, that's where I wanted to go next yeah. because that's the... That's sort of where all this leads to, and, and eventually to President Obama and writing jokes for him. Yeah, that was So fun. this was a big change in your life, right, to, to work with her and write the book. It was. Yeah. And, you know, she called me because um, we'd, we'd been doing speeches, and speeches made sense. Speeches are like dialogue for, right. you know, and I always tease like her. That stand, next, it's a stand-up <laughs> yeah. version of stand-up, yeah. I would say next to Murphy Brown, she's my favorite person to write for. Um, and we, um, she calls me up and says, oh, I just got an offer to do a book. And mm -hmm. I said, I wouldn't do it without you. Mm -hmm. And I say, well, Cheryl, I've never written a book. Mm -hmm. And she says, neither have I. Uh -huh. um, so we leaned in. Yeah. I mean, it really was. Uh, and, and that led to uh, writing jokes for President Obama. Well, uh, yes. In a, I Cheryl mean, in a, okay. 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 In, a, in a roundabout us. way. But just to. To close well on that with that experience, what was that like? Well, it's it's a wonderful way to serve your country by <laughs> writing jokes, <laughs> and he's got great delivery. Um, and you know, uh, one of the jokes I wrote for him had to the punchline was he says I was born in Hawaii, and then winks at the camera, and um, I thought. For a millisecond, I was the most powerful person in the country because I had made the leader of the free world, world wink. <laughs> really? Yeah. And you thought... And I squandered that power. I did nothing in that what millisecond. What did you do for the good of humanity? <laughs> you did nothing. Um, you wrote a book. I wrote a book. Just the funny parts and a few hard truths about sneaking into the Hollywood's book, Boys Club. 
Yeah. Nell Scavell. Or book club. <laughs> or book club. I would love to sneak into everyone's book club. <laughs> Join ours. Okay. Nell, thank you very much. Thank nice you. Nice to talk to you.